the richest seven nations on the planet gather this week for their annual G7 huddle, U.S. President Joe Biden will urge all G7 members to cash in on Russia's frozen assets to bankroll Ukraine's sustained defense against the former Soviet Union's armed attacks. In addition, Biden will ask all to come together to tackle infrastructure spending, development of AI, and Chinese overcapacity in green technologies. VOA's White House Bureau Chief Patsy Wittekoswara reports on a trending right-wing shift in the EU political landscape that may get in the way of Biden's plans. As Russian forces advance on the battlefield in Ukraine and war funding fatigue settles more deeply among American and European taxpayers, the U.S. wants the group of seven leading industrialized nations to provide Kyiv with a $50 billion loan to be paid back using interest from the approximately $280 billion in Russian assets immobilized in Western financial institutions. President Joe Biden spoke with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Paris last week. The United States is standing with you. You are the bulwark against the aggression that's taking place. Having quadrupled tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles and other key sectors last month, Biden now wants the G7 to confront Beijing's practice of flooding global markets with cheap exports in those industries. It's critical that we and the growing number of countries who have identified this as a concern present a clear and united front. However, far-right parties' gains in European Parliament elections over the weekend have weakened French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, adding uncertainty to the G7's posture on Russia and China. Ursula von der Leyen is fighting to remain European Commission President for another term. If she succeeds, Europe is expected to remain strong on Russia and China. But the wild card really are the French elections here, the snap elections that Emmanuel Macron had announced after his defeat in the European parliamentary elections. If the far right gets into government in France, then we will have trouble not only on Ukraine support, but also on the China front. G7 host Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni has invited Pope Francis to highlight the Rome call for AI ethics, urging governments and companies to follow ethical principles for AI. Curbing migration to Europe by investing in Africa is another key theme of Maloney's G7 presidency. The initiative aligns with the G7's Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment, whose goal is to mobilize $600 billion in private infrastructure funding by 2027 as an alternative to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Meloni's far-right Brothers of Italy party victory in the European parliamentary election has consolidated her power. I'm proud that this nation presents itself at the G7 in Europe with the strongest government of all. Biden leaves for Italy on Wednesday, a day after his son Hunter Biden was found guilty on federal charges of obtaining a gun in 2018 while addicted to drugs. Patsy Widakuswara, VOA News at the White House.